Hello everyone, in this video I will quickly explain how to use the fetch API in JavaScript to make different asynchronous requests while using get, post, put and patch and also using authorization headers. So let's get into it. Welcome to Novel Tech Media, my name is Alexander and my goal is to simplify and explain software development to you and also keep you updated on all the latest tech trends. So if that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Here I have prepared a simple GET API example. Here we are fetching a JSON file across the network and printing it to the console. The simplest use of fetch takes exactly one argument, the path to the resource you want to fetch, aka the URL, and returns a promise containing the uh, promise response. So this means when this gets executed, we are not receiving the result but we are receiving the promise of the result, as seen here. Now I have uncommented the second part of the code to resolve the promise using a then statement. The first then statement uh, converts the response to a JSON format and the second statement just prints out the response to the console. So if we run this, we should get actually the response from the API. The fetch API method can optionally accept a second parameter, an init object that allows you to control a number of different settings. The parameters you can supply include the method, which represents the type of request, which can be a put, post, patch and get request. It doesn't matter if you are using upper or lower case here, both options will work. You can also specify the headers, which represent your normal headers you would use, for example, in Postman. When using a post request, you need to specify the content type, but if using a GET request, you can just leave this empty um, if the API doesn't require it. If using a POST or PUT, you can also specify the body of the request. When specifying the body, you have to convert the data to a string, and therefore I'm using JSON stringify here here commented. Uh, the mode can either be set to coarse or to no coarse and you can also specify a cache policy. So remember, when sending data you need to convert it to a string, when receiving the data you need to unconvert it from a string and convert it into a JSON file to work with it. You should also specify a catch statement to catch any errors that might be coming from the requested URL. It is also important to put the catch statement as the last statement to catch any possible errors coming from the code. If you position the catch statement before uh, this then for example, then any error thrown inside this then statement would still not be catched. So you can have multiple catch statements, but it is important to have one catch statement at the end of the chain. If your app requires you to log in, you can also supply an authorization header using this statement here where you are providing your username and password so in your case you would replace the username and password with your real username and password. There is still a problem with this approach. Let's say for the purpose I added two extra lines, a console log statement here and a console log statement here. So you would expect this line to execute first, then wait for the fetch and the response to execute and then execute the second line here. But this is not true. If you run the program, actually we get the first executed first, the second second, and then the fetch, which should be the second, is executed last. Why? Because the fetch is taking the longest time to execute, so it gets executed last. So, in order to resolve this problem, we need to come up with a better approach. So here, I have rewritten the function in a different way to make it work. I could have probably done it in a simpler way, but I did it like that to better explain you how this actually works. So first I had to wrap our last function inside an async function. Why did I do that? Because inside an async function we can use the await keyword. The await keyword is going to wait for the fetch until it resolves the response. So when we get the response of the fetch, the code will continue to execute further. Here I have uh, splitted this here, those two tens, into those two statements. The first is awaiting the response from the fetch 
and the second is converting it to a JSON format. So I have also wrapped the entire function in a try statement in order to catch any coming errors. And then I'm just returning either the data or the error from the function. Now I have also created a second function in which I'm calling the do something funny function. I could have done this in the same place, but I wanted to explain further why I had to do it like that. Because the do something funny function is also an async function, we, we need to use the await keyword again in order to wait for the response. So, but in order to use the wait keyword, we have to wrap it inside an async function. So here, uh, our first statement instill the console log first, then we are calling the do something funny function with the await keyword in order to wait for any response. Then we are printing out the response and then we are having the third console log which prints second. So if you run this now, this will provide the same result each time. So what you need to think about is the asynchronous nature of the fetch API. If you have multiple lines of code that need to be executed in a specific order, you will need to use the async API. So like we had in this example where we had three different lines of code that need to be executed in a specific order. If you don't have this case, then you can just, let's say you have a button, you click on the button and you just want to fetch the response from there, then you wouldn't need to use the async function. You also always need to specify the content type if doing a post request and you also need always to convert the JSON file into a string and uh, revert the string into a JSON file when receiving the data back. You should always uh, use a catch or try catch statement to catch any errors coming from the request. And you should also implement some better solution that we, do, that we did here to error handling. So here I'm just returning the error, but you should always implement some custom logic to handle your errors. Also look at the correct status codes. 200 is a successful get, 201 is a successful post, meaning that um, some resource has been created on the server. And 304 means not modified, which you will get in the case that the response has already been cached and hasn't been changed. So if you do a get request, you will get the 304 code. So don't worry about that. And that's pretty much everything there is to the fetch API. It's pretty straightforward how to use it. If you didn't understand everything or if I skipped something, leave me a comment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. So thank you for watching and see you next time.